Hey, it's Paul Salo from paulsalo.com. Today's video is about how you could create a, your own electric car company. I'm out here at uh, Queen City Ridge Park out in uh, Bangkok and it's a beautiful evening. The sun just set and uh, today's topic, right, is about electric cars. Now, you look at Elon Musk, right? You think, oh, wow, you know, that guy's a genius. You know, he started his own electric car company. Uh, he's got a rocket, you know, he, you know, space company. Uh, he's invested in numerous other very uh, smart companies. And you think, you know, could I do something like that? Or is it possible, you know, like, to, is it, have all ideas been used up, you know, especially for something as difficult as a car, right? Because car companies obviously take a lot of investment and uh, electric cars are already starting to get going. So if you believe in electric cars, watch this and tell me what you think. Okay, so first one is a trick question. What is the most uh, efficient car in the world? There's a line of cars, they're the most efficient, 100%. When you include their footprint, so how much it takes to manufacture them, uh, and how much it takes to run them, their fuel efficiency, uh, everything included, how many people they, they ride, you know, how many people can go in the car. There's one type of car that is the most efficient car in the world, and it's, there's no question about it. It's the Japanese K cars. Okay, now what is a K car? A K car, if you haven't lived in Japan, you probably haven't seen them because they pretty much only exist in Japan. But a K car, what it is, K means light, so it's like light car. And what, what a light car, a K car is, is they started in 1949, the very first K car. The very first K car was 100cc. So it was basically for poor people. So the war had just ended, and Japan had a massive need for transportation. Everything had been destroyed, and they didn't have the resources to make regular cars yet. So they had 100cc cars, and that was called the K car originally. As time has gone on, the K car is now uh, the the size of the engine. It's 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 regulated by the government. They give like tax breaks for driving these cars because they're very efficient. They're very small. They're great for parking. They're great for cities. Uh, they're great for countryside too because. Uh, it's just it's a great way for farmers to get around and move things because they, they have trucks and they have vans and everything is a K car so it, it's a set s standard I don't know sorry I don't know the exact uh, centimeter length but it's a set size you can only be a certain size as a K car and the engine has to be a certain size the engine is a 660 cc engine so it's smaller than many motorcycles so the current K car in 1990 they, they moved up to 660 it was 100, and it went to 150, 250, 360, and then finally it got to where it is today. So today we have a 660cc car. They're only used in Japan, and they're amazing. Who makes them? Names that you would already know. Names like Toyota, or sorry, Honda, Daihatsu, Mitsubishi, uh, and Honda. Was it Honda? Suzuki. Suzuki is a huge one for K cars. So you have these like large Japanese manufacturers. And you have uh, a lot of the Japanese talent, uh, engineering talent, gets wasted, in my opinion, on projects that are only used in Japan. And they never, because they're so Japanese or they're so, uh, you know, tied into a certain part of Japanese business or culture that they never actually get exported. K cars is one of those things. I, I lived in Japan for a long time and I saw these K cars and I thought, you know, these are pretty neat, right? They're pretty neat little cars, like dirt. There's all kinds of cars, and I'll put I'll put examples down below the video. You know, there's like a little dump truck one. There's like tons of vans. They have um, like a, a, a two-seater, sporty, like a convertible. Most of them carry four people. And the average weight that I could figure out when I was looking online is about 880 kilograms. So that's like uh, 2,000 pounds, about 2,000 pounds, probably just under 2,000 pounds. 2.2 uh, .2 pounds, yeah, about 2,000 pounds. So they're very, very lightweight. In fact. I knew a guy, a Japanese friend of mine, and he would he was so strong, he was like a he was like a strong man. He'd get drunk and he would pick up the back of a K car uh, and then they would spin the wheels when when he was at a party. So that was his party trick. The back of the pickup of the K car is, is much lighter than the front where the engine is, right? So you have these cars, they're manufactured in bulk, they've been driven and tested since 1949. So I mean, these cars aren't like Teslas, they're not brand new. You know, they've been tested in every possible circumstance. In fact, there's even a video online of a uh, Suzuki K car pulling an 18 wheeler out of the snow, right? Because he got stuck in the snow. And this little K car, they're so well engineered, I can't even tell you. They're like the perfect little size for a car, right? Anybody who knows about physics 
and cars, you know that the physics are the number one thing that uh, determine whether your car is a good driving car, you know, has a good drive road feel. Uh, you could put all the technology you want in it, but if the physics are wrong, it's, it's going to have some holes, it's going to have some, you know, problems. And what I like about K-cars especially is because they're inherently super light, right? Like if you look at any racing car, if you look at any racing motorcycle, they're always trying to get alloys that are the lightest possible thing, carbon fiber, because in the end, weight is, the, is your number one enemy of good performance, right? Whether it's braking performance, cornering performance, gas mileage, or speed, uh, weight is your big enemy uh, with any kind of car. So the K cars, they have that in, in spades because they're very, very uh, light. So you have these cars. Now, everybody that I can see is making, K uh, making electric cars. What they're doing is like, you know, I don't know if you saw the recent uh, Faraday has their, um, they had a, like a, a sample of their new, that's a new like Tesla competitor. And it looks like, it looks something like the Batmobile, right? It's this like massive, uh, you know, like uh, has big black wings and stuff. I don't know how it's going to eventually look, but it's obvious that it's like, a, it's a premium. It's going to be a sporty car, very sporty. Uh, it's going to be expensive, right? So you have Tesla, which are very expensive. The average person can't afford a Tesla. Uh, the average person can't afford, uh, you know, even, even a, a Chevy Volt are quite expensive. You know, we're talking about they're subsidized and they're still, 40,000 or more, $40,000. I don't know what the exact price is, but they're, they're not cheap, yeah, they're not cheap. And considering what you get for it, they're quite expensive. Because they're just like, essentially they're an economy car, just that they're electric, right? So I'm thinking, how could you solve all these problems at once? How could you make a car? My goal for a car would be an electric car that is that could be mass produced for under $15,000 with no subsidies. Okay, the average K car sells for under ten thousand dollars. Okay, so they they sell for this is they're already being sold like I don't know how many every year, but there's tons in Japan. It's the number one. It's the most popular car outside of Tokyo. People drive K cars like crazy. Uh, and even yeah, in fact, even uh, some of some of the uh, drifters are uh, fix them up and they, they uh, drift in K cars. So it's quite a little uh, you know a little practical uh, uh, thing. And also, I tell you something. They're pretty cute. Uh, you know, a lot of girls have them. Uh, they like to have, uh, you know, uh, a K car. And some of them are very, very cute. And they just, they just look cute, like a, almost like a little, uh, sp uh, like a running shoe that's like on a cute girl. It looks very cute, right? It's the same kind of thing in the K cars. K cars, they're quite attractive, if the, the certain ones. The older K cars, you know, back in the day, were pretty ugly. They were all white and they were all boxy and everything. But today's K cars are beautiful and they look good. And there's all different millions of styles to choose from. So, now if Honda or Toyota could, you know, imagine that they have this gem, because they have these K cars, and basically K cars have been almost gone bankrupt many times. When, when uh, I think it was 76 or whatever, when they switched from two stroke to four stroke, they almost, uh, K cars uh, they almost went out because they were too dirty. Uh, and then they went to four stroke and they overcame that barrier. Uh, the, the, the government a couple of years ago took some of the taxes. They give you a tax break for having a K car because they're so small uh, and they're so efficient. Uh, but uh, then they took that away, a lot of the subsidies away, and people kept driving K cars. You know, they're still a very popular car. But you could take a K car, okay, and turn it into an electric car. Imagine you have a car; it's 800 kilograms, right? That means 800 kilograms. It's like nothing, right? For a car, it's nothing. Okay, and then you put a, a Tesla battery in the thing, right? So you get the big Tesla battery down on the bottom of it, right? I mean, you got yourself a, <laughs> you probably got a 400 mile range car right there. Uh, of course, I'm open and I want to hear from engineers and people that, that know uh, about engineering, but I can tell you one thing is if you put a massive battery in a small car, it's going to go a long way, right? Because the car doesn't, you know, it's light. So there you go. There's, there's things all around you. Japanese companies right now are trying to uh, export. They're really going for it. They're trying to, one of my friends was just hired to help the Tokyo government to export some of their products that are not exporting. And it's interesting that you have these companies that are very, very international, but they're not exporting the K-card. Now why? Why would they not export it? Common wisdom, okay, is it's impossible. The K-card is too small. Americans would never buy it. And uh, if you're the type of person that doesn't, uh, question things you'd say well yeah that, that is impossible right but we're entering a new era okay we're entering an era where there's gonna be self-driving cars so 
if you have self-driving cars, okay, they don't need, all right, the more self-driving cars you have on the road, you don't need as much safety as you do when you have like random people drunk driving around uh, and taking speed and driving trucks and things, right? Falling asleep at the wheel, texting and things like that. So that's why if you look at, uh, like for example, inside the Amazon warehouse, they have all these little robots that uh, move everything around, but they don't have any safety around them because they don't run into each other, right? They're, they're very, uh, they're very uh, uh, better than human drivers, right? So now car, cars, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, it's taking time and they are, the self-driving car is a huge success. Uh, I think they went the first two million miles without an accident or something, quite, quite a lot. I mean, it's been very successful, but it's not perfect. Uh, but as you know, uh, with machine learning and with technology, is uh, you know the computer of 1980 is not quite as fast as the computer today, and it's the same thing with self-driving cars. They're improving very, very fast, very, very rapidly, and a lot of smart minds are working on this. So now you have a car that's efficient, small. It's from a good maker, right? It's a, you know Honda, uh, you know Mitsubishi. These are great makers, right? Reliable. Everybody knows the name. You, you, you could purchase the carcass or the frame of the car, put a battery in it, put an electric motor in it, and you got yourself an electric car. I mean, brand new, they sell for less than 10,000. So if you buy, obviously if you negotiate a deal and start purchasing K cars, uh, I don't see why you can't do it. And a lot of people say, oh, can't work. Can't work, why not? Uh, Actually, that's not the way my friend said it. He was very cool about it. But he said, wait, well, how would it work? Because the K cars are so small and, uh, you know, you have laws that uh, govern the size of vehicles uh, in America and safety and things like that. That's true. That's true. You do have laws that you that uh, are in your way and you will have challenges. And probably the biggest challenge for an electric K car might be uh, changing the regulatory environment to make those possible. But I mean, look. In, our, in my lifetime, regula regulations have changed a million times. I mean, for, I mean, marijuana is legal in a lot of states now. I mean, when I grew up, it was like the most illegal thing you could do, go straight to jail, right? Things change over time. And governments and people are waking up to the fact that electric cars are the way to go. They are the way to go and they're the way to the future. You got a car that's mass produced, you got a super cheap car, you got a coming technology, and you have the physics that perfectly fit with an electric vehicle because, you know, right now with a big heavy American car, you know, you're sure you can only get to 200 miles out of the ones that are coming out to 2017. But if you put a nice small one in there, right, you're gonna have some big jumps. And whenever you have big jumps in range, you don't have range anxiety. So you have like massive, uh, uh, you know, have adoption much, much quicker, right? And like I say, as the future comes along, uh, self-driving, uh, cars, you know, if you have a bunch of like K cars lined up going down a special lane in the freeway, you might guess there's not a lot of safety concerns, right? Uh, you know, they're all cruising along, right? So that's the other thing that could happen is you could push for regulation that would give K cars their own lane. Might sound unrealistic, right? In the freeway, right? Might sound totally unrealistic, but look at what has happened already. In Los Angeles, they have a special lane and it's for people driving two or more uh, in the car. It used to be for hybrids. And now hybrids are too common, so they, they, hybrids can't use it anymore. But if you have two people in the car, you can use a special lane in Los Angeles, and that lane usually has less traffic, right? It's like a fast lane and nobody's there. So what's stopping people from having another lane? Because K cars are very, very small. Okay, they're tiny. They're like, I mean, they could drive on something like what that a motorcycle would drive on, right? And as they go to self-driving, they're gonna need even less space, right? Because they're gonna be, you know, uh, laser sharp, right? Those be straight down the, uh, the road. So I don't think that any of these problems are insurmountable. And I think that the future is going to be more and more different types of lanes. And the, day, the days of like, you know, one lane fits all kind of thing, you know, the, uh, the, the where the, you just have, you know, every car and truck and everything matches together probably is going to change because there's going to be more and more bicycle lanes. Uh, as city planning gets better, there's going to be more and more, like I said, electric car lanes. And especially with the K-car, it's perfect for regulation. Why? Why is it perfect? I said it in the beginning, because the size of the car is regulated. The very, 
the exact dimensions of these cars. You don't have to negotiate or change anything. The cars are regulated, they're a certain size. So you can design a special road that takes up half the space of a regular road and you don't have to worry that one of them is gonna be bigger or smaller. As long as you're using K-car bodies, it's gonna fit straight on that road. So I would say that if I was gonna do this business, the way to start would be to start in major cities. And the reason is, is the, the Japanese, uh, I don't know what you call it, but the safety, like the car, car safety, uh, transportation, whatever, agency, they said that anything under 30 miles an hour, these K cars are pretty safe. But you start getting up to 70 miles an hour uh, and they're not as safe, right? So uh, in cities where traffic doesn't get above a certain speed and also where parking is scarce, like San Francisco, like uh, Los Angeles, uh, New York, I mean, London, these are great cities that you could test out uh, a car like this. And I think people would appreciate it because I mean, if there's one thing you hate is when you're driving around, you can't get a parking space. But if you have a K car, it's, 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 they're just tiny. You can, I've seen people park them on the littlest, I mean, the most craziest places. You, you see K cars in the countryside in Japan parked on these little things. Are, they're not about this wide almost. I mean, it's just like so on a you know, side of a hill, they'll have a K car like up on the, uh, up on there, you know, parked in there. So they're very practical. They're very small. They're cute. They're already mass produced. They're the lightest weight cars in the world, 800, you know, less than 2,000 pounds. They're, they, they're manufactured by reliable, well-known brands that everybody would believe right off the bat is a reliable car, right? So it would give you a lot of, you know, if you had a Honda, for example, if you had a Honda body and you were doing the new, you know, Honda electric car uh, using their body, probably you start the company, they're probably Honda would buy you, right? So. I think that, uh, that there's a real opportunity here. Uh, and of course, there's many things to think about and nothing is simple. I don't want you to think that, uh, you know, just because you have a good idea, it's gonna be super easy to start a business. It's not true, it can be difficult, it can be challenging, but I think you'll find out that it's very, very exciting and very, very fun. And you, it's, to me, it's almost like a dream every time I do a new company. You know, I get a new idea and I go and roll it out and then I look back and I look at it, I'm just like, yeah, you know, I thought of that thing, and then I did it. And there it is right there, you know. It's a great feeling, it's a, it's a great feeling. Getting together also, the other thing about starting a business is you get smart people around you, right? Because you hire the best. You find the best people to be around you. The most capable, smart, yeah, you know, practical, uh, quick thinking people are the great, great people to work with. So, there you go. There's my idea for an electric car. I'm sure there's many, many more. And there will be many, many more. Uh, but I think that's a wasted opportunity right now is these cars that are now like losing favor in Japan. And I'm sure the manufacturers would be very glad to sell them overseas. I guarantee you that they'll be very happy to sell to you uh, to test it out, to get things started, uh, to give an attempt. So there you go. thank you very much for watching and subscribe to the channel with the uh, little red button down there and uh, new ideas. Uh, all the time on paulsalo.com. I hope you enjoyed it and please uh, leave a comment if you liked it. Thank you very much.